Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will talk about the RTX 5070 Ti, which is about as fast as a 7900 XTX and about as fast as a 4080. And it's also about 10% faster than an RTX 4070 Ti Super. Yeah, that's basically everything we can say to it. Maybe that it's also a little bit less power hungry than the 7900 XTX. But then it's, that, yeah, that's really about it. But if you still want to listen to more and see all the details, let's get to it. You think your data is automatically GDPR compliant just because the server is located in Germany? It's actually not that simple. Due to the US Cloud Act, any American company can be forced to hand over data to US authorities, even if it's hosted in Europe. European providers like Hetzner on the other hand are subject to EU data regulations and are therefore not affected by the US Cloud Act. Combined with the right settings and contracts, you can ensure that your data is truly GDPR compliant. For example, with Hetzner Object Storage, you not only store your data in a GDPR compliant manner, but you can also easily scale it at any time, flexible and securely, according to your needs. You can find all information for safe and worry-free hosting by following the link in the description. As a first metric, we can as usual look at the 3 dmark Times by Extreme and also at the 3 dmark Speedway to get an impression of both older and newer games. And for the older games and raster performance, 3 dmark Times by Extreme GT1 is a very good indicator. There we can see the RTX 5070 Ti being about 12% faster than the 4070 Ti Super and about 7% behind the 7900 XTX. In this situation, the 5070 Ti is about twice as fast as an RTX 2080 Ti. And now for newer games, 3D Mark Speedway, especially if they use ray tracing. Interestingly, in this scenario, the 5070 Ti beats the RTX 4080, while it consumes about 10% less power. It also clearly beats the 7900 XTX. And in this situation, it is about 9% faster than the 4070 Ti Super. Now before we jump into the gaming benchmarks, we will first look at this card in more detail when it comes to fan speed, coil wine, how it clocks, PCIe speed and all that. The MSI Ventus 3X was pretty decent for me. It's a quiet card and even as you can see now in idle it's semi-passive. The PCB is quite short as you can see that's why the power connector is a little bit inconvenient in the center. Generally speaking though I was positively surprised with the card with the layout. It is pretty quiet and also I didn't really notice any kind of coil wine which was good. Same as 5080 and 5090 also the RTX 5070 Ti comes with PCIe 5.0. I'm just running the render test to force it into x16 otherwise the power saving mode would drop it down to for example 1.1. But with this specific card, I didn't have any issues with PCIe 5.0. Can also see 16 gigabyte with GDDR7, which is the main difference, at least when it comes to the memory, to for example at 4080. And we will just switch to the gaming scenario. If you're looking at how the GPU behaves, we can see 2750 on the GPU, 1750 on the memory. The GPU temperature is always around 65 degrees Celsius. Memory temperature I saw slightly above 70 degrees Celsius. That is all in the absolutely green zone. What I observed, what I find interesting is that whenever I put the card under load, the initial fan speed is always a bit higher. So it's maybe 2150 RPM and then it is dropping down a little bit to about 2000, which I personally think could still be lower. So if you want to tweak this manually, you could surely still make this card quite a bit more quiet, especially looking at the 65 degrees Celsius on the GPU. So there is certainly headroom for either lowering the fan speed or also for overclocking potential. And if we look at the board power draw, we can see just below 300 watts in the gaming scenario. Now the gaming benchmarks and we will jump into Star Wars Outlaws, which was the scene that I just showed you for just generating some background load for the card. And I want to highlight that I was testing everything in 4K. But the 5070 Ti I would personally probably more use as a 1440p card. But with all the, you know, 12 volt high power stuff happening lately, I simply didn't have any time to retest all the other cards again in 1440p. I would probably need like, I don't know, two or three days for that. And that's why we will just also compare this one with 4K. And even though I'm aware that it might be better to look at 1440p, I think 
most other reviewers might look at 1440p, so in the end it might actually not be that bad to also have some information for 4K. So let's get to it. In Star Wars Outlaws I tested all the cards with DLSS quality but without frame generation because even after a couple of driver updates for the GPU and also patches for the games, it is still not working for me, I still don't know why. But in this condition we can see the 5070 Ti being about 9% slower than the 4080 and about 12% faster than the 4070 Ti Super. In Assassin's Creed Mirage the 5070 Ti is 11% faster than the 4070 Ti Super while consuming about the same power and it's about 6% behind a 4080. Interestingly now if we enable DLSS quality the 5070 Ti now beats the 4080 which might be just due to the fact that the Blackwell is the newer GPU and is more focused on the DLSS features. And if we compare it again versus the 4070 Ti Super then the 5070 Ti is 20% faster now. In Cyberpunk, without ray tracing and without path tracing, the 5070Ti is, when we just look at the performance, identical to a 4080. However, it consumes 14% less power, which is definitely interesting and also very important. In this scenario, the 7900XTX is much faster than the 5070Ti and on the level of a 5080. But also in this scenario, if we enable DLSS performance with frame generation and also in this scenario, ray tracing and path tracing are enabled, the 5070 Ti is now benefiting from its newer tech and it can definitely beat the 4070 Ti Super, at least on paper, if we look at the average FPS. If we look at the 1% low, the difference is not that big and also subjectively it doesn't feel really different, which might be due to the 1% low but also due to the extra latency that is introduced. In Counter-Strike 2 it beats again an RTX 4080 with a slightly lower power draw. Then again in Remnant 2 the 5070 Ti is again a little bit slower than the 4080 and it's about 10% faster than the 4070 Ti Super. And again I'm starting to see a pattern once we enable the LSS the 5070 Ti beats the 4080. So that seems to be the thing once the LSS is enabled. And last one Valorant and we're just seeing the same thing again it is slightly behind the 4080 and about 10% in front of a 4070 Ti Super. That brings me back to the beginning of the video where I said that the RTX 5070 Ti is roughly the same performance as the 4080 or also the 7900 XTX. And also having this same performance as the 4080 means that it's roughly the same performance also as a 4080 Super because they're like 2 or 3 percent apart, which is not necessarily a bad thing, you know, the, the 5070 Ti seems to be same performance but consuming a little bit less power and it has in theory multi-frame generation. So it's kind of it's kind of a little bit more efficient 4080 with multi-frame generation. So I think that that sums it up. We will quickly take this card apart, take a closer look at this 5070 Ti. You know, it also comes with our friend, the 12 volt high power connector. And what I find kind of amusing is when there was the initial launch briefing by Nvidia, where, you know, mentioning all the cards from 5070 Ti up to 5090, there was a chat and in the chat I dropped a message if the 5070 Ti is heavily over specced with the 12 volt high power connector or if the 5090 is just heavily under specced with a single connector. Yeah, I think we all know the answer even though I didn't get one from Nvidia at least in the briefing. But I find it cool how small the PCB is and how far more the cooler is extended over a PCB. That's very very good for cooling. As I said, the card is really not that loud for me, but it might have a negative impact if you're using an air cooler. Now without the back plate, you know, if you're thinking about that these are being sold for probably about a thousand euros and you see that the back plate, which is made from aluminium, which doesn't look bad, but it's just not used at all. They could have placed at least a single thermal pad to at least give you the impression that they at least tried to use it for cooling, but yeah, it's not used at all for anything. Always impressive how tiny these PCBs are these days. I'm not sure if it would make sense to make a water block for such a card, but it would be really tiny, really nice and cute. The GPU is about 25.5 millimeters long and about 15.7 millimeters wide. Now the thing is very similar to all the other RTX 50 cards. The performance itself is not that bad. It's not impressive either. It's not. It's just not that bad. But it might be very bad when it comes to the pricing, which is something that is, at least for me, really hard to judge. You know, if you're just looking at the MSRP of 749, 
that would not be bad because at 749 USD, you would get this card, which is roughly 4080 performance. It's a little bit more efficient, has multi-frame generation if you're looking for that. So just looking at that, actually not too bad. It's not impressive, but it's, it's not bad. Not bad, not terrible is something I would say. But I don't know. The pricing and the things that were leaked up front just didn't look good, you know. In Germany, we saw prices between 1,000 and 1,300 euros, which would simply be way too high. Because that is sometimes above a 4080 Super, or often above a 4080 Super. And a 4080 Super, on average, should be faster than this card. It, ha it doesn't have multi-frame generation, you know, NVIDIA, I know that, but most people probably won't care. Yeah. It makes it incredibly hard for me as a reviewer to just give a good conclusion. The MSRP doesn't look bad, you know, but the reality, the prices in reality, they look a lot, a lot different and they might also change overnight. So difficult for me to give a real good conclusion. It's an okay card, should do okay on a technical level. It's not impressive, but the price might kill it. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Bye-bye.